Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. What time is it? Oh my god! I'm late! I gotta get to the club! One drive later. Turns out it's the morning. Not the night. So it's not club time. I hate iPhones for giving me misinformation. Club Spongebob is the episode where Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward get stranded out in the kelp forest and Spongebob and Patrick do nothing much to Squidward's annoyance. This episode aired on July 12th, 2002 and is also known as... Ooh, the magic conch shell! Something that we most see here and very little else. It also introduces the kelp forest, a location that is rarely referred to by name, but actually does appear more often in the series than you might think. But not a lot. Just look at all these appearances in the series. But at least it's not attached to continuity errors like Glove World is in the later seasons, but it's too soon. I heard that this is a bit of a controversial episode from this season. Not as bad as something like episodes 101, Party Pooper Pants, or 107, The Great Snail Race from this same season. Well, in order to figure that out, let's watch it to overanalyze it for all it's worth. So the episode starts up and Squidward puts on his hat to go to work. Up in a little treehouse at the top of a kelp tree, Swindob and Patrick made comments about Squidward, making several words start with the letter W. Squidward got annoyed and asked if that was some kind of secret code. Swindob and Patrick said that it was a secret because Squidward wasn't a member of their club. And they said that Squidward couldn't get in no matter if he tried. Squidward misinterpreted this and tried to get into the treehouse himself. But when he got to the top, he realized that they meant he couldn't fit in literally because they've been stuck up there for three days. So they gave him an initiation for new members by singing, Welcome Squidward, Welcome Squidward, Welcome Squidward. So all new club members are called Squidward, even if their name is not Squidward? Squidward tries to climb down, but he accidentally pulls the treehouse down with him, which gets flung far away and crash lands in the middle of the kelp forest. Spongebob and Patrick were excited at first, but Squidward was terrified since he was lost, especially with Spongebob and Patrick. They tried to make him feel better, but it didn't work. Spongebob tried to lift everybody's spirits up, and then he brought out the magic conch shell, which Patrick was excited about. Squidward got annoyed saying the shell was just a toy, and Spongebob and Patrick say that the club has to take its advice before doing anything. When Spongebob asked how to get out of the kelp forest, the shell said, Nothing. Spongebob and Patrick sit still, and Squidward leaves them behind to find his own way back. He chuckles at first, but then he finds himself lost for real. And then he sees a light at the end of the tunnel and rushes to it, thinking it's the way out. But he realizes he's back where he started. Weeks go by, and Squidward was trying to make the best of things, with Spongebob and Patrick still doing nothing. Squidward roasts a bug and taunts Spongebob and Patrick by saying he has his own food while Spongebob and Patrick are doing nothing because they listen to a talking clam toy as if good things for them would just fall right out of the sky. At that moment, a picnic supply plane was falling right out of the sky, so they dropped the load, which was food, a tent, and a fire, right next to Spongebob and Patrick. They still didn't get out of the kelp forest. Spongebob and Patrick started scarfing down the food, and Squidward was awestruck by all the food boners they had. He awkwardly asked if he was still a member of the club, and Spongebob confirmed that indeed he is. Squidward was so excited to eat, he couldn't decide. He refuses to ask the magic conch what he should eat, so Spongebob and Patrick refused to let Squidward eat at first after everything the conch gave them. So Squidward decides to ask, but the magic conch shell doesn't let Squidward eat anything, despite Squidward being starving. No matter how many times Squidward asked, the magic conch shell still wouldn't let him eat, and Squidward got more furious than ever. Then a forest ranger shows up and finds Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward. Squidward was so relieved to finally have help, but as soon as he mentioned the magic conch shell, it turns out the forest ranger had one too, signifying him as a long-lost club member, much to Squidward's shock. His magic conch shell also says to do nothing, so they comply with Squidward admitting defeat and doing nothing too, and the episode ends. They still didn't get out of the kelp forest. So that was Club Spongebob, and I think I would describe that as a decent episode. I wouldn't call it one of season 3's best, but there is still a lot of good in it, and some not good elements in it. 
let's start with the good. There are a lot of funny jokes in this episode. I love the interactions between Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward at the beginning. The conversations about not fitting in, only to find out that they meant literally. As a kid, my favorite part was Spongebob and Patrick's sentences with the W words. Where does he work? What the wusty web? And I still think they're funny today. Despite everything Squidward goes through, he still has some great moments here. I like the meta joke where he says every 11 minutes of his life are filled with misery when he teases Spongebob and Patrick for not eating and all the over the top facial expression he has whether he's mad, in shock, or defeated. These days, my favorite quote is this. Dude, we're falling right out of the sky! We gotta drop the load! And I would say my second favorite quote is... Yummy, delicious, super terrific sandwich! I love the sequences where the treehouse gets flung to the kelp forest and when Squidward finds himself lost. That sequence, as short-lived as it is, does convey the feeling of being lost in the middle of nowhere and in the dark. I only wish it lasted longer. The food here looked really good and I wish I could have had it myself. I also like Patrick's gag where he builds the coffins out of nowhere. But now, let's talk about everything else. The reason why several people don't like this episode. Squidward at least made an effort to leave but still got the short end of the stick when he ended up back with Spongebob and Patrick. And then, when Spongebob and Patrick got their banquet that fell right out of the sky, they gave Squidward permission to eat it, but the magic conch refuses to let Squidward eat anything. I know that was because of how Squidward insulted and mocked the conch, but the poor guy hadn't eaten proper food in a while, and you're just gonna let the poor guy starve to death, magic conch shell? Yes. Well, remind me to never bring you when I go out to dinner, magic conch shell. Now on the other hand, Squidward was the one who did get them into the situation in the first place. If he didn't confront Spongebob and Patrick about what they were saying, the conversation of clubs wouldn't have come up. And then when he tried to climb down, they wouldn't have gotten flung into the middle of nowhere. So if Squidward not being allowed to eat is karma for him getting them stuck in the middle of nowhere, I say that's too far as well. But Squidward didn't mean to get them stuck in the middle of nowhere. If he did intend to do it, now that's a different story. But judging by this reaction when the vine snaps, he didn't intend on getting them trapped. Even if Squidward did get them trapped in the middle of the forest, I still feel bad for him because he didn't deserve to starve to death even if he did mock the magic conch shell. And even when I was younger, it took me a while to realize that the shell was being rude to Squidward because he insulted it. This feels like the episode was trying to do the Squidward character development trope that the series likes, but it missed the mark. Squidward didn't join willingly, he only gave in at the very end after giving up, and we don't see anything going well for him. It's not like episode 4, Bubble Stand from season 1, where Squidward scolded Spongebob and Patrick for blowing bubble art, but then he became intrigued and tried to do it himself. And even though he didn't do the technique at first, he gave in and did the technique. And when he realized he made a good bubble, he was satisfied. But he was too conceited to admit that it was the technique that allowed him to blow the big bubble, even though he clearly did the technique and karma bit him in the ass when the bubble engulfed his house and lifted it away. If you ask me, his karma was when the stuff fell out of the sky, and the shell not letting him have anything to eat was going too far. He did decide to ask the shell, even though it took a while, but he still listened to them in some way. The episode is good up to the part where Squidward starts to talk to the shell, and then goes south when the shell refuses to let him have anything to eat. And since that's near the end, it honestly brings the episode down a few points, not gonna lie. But since it's only a fraction of the runtime, I wouldn't say it ruins the whole episode, and I just think that some parts were a little unnecessary, even if they could be worse. There are still some scenes I love in this episode. The story itself is still pretty good, but it did kind of fall flat by the end. Not to make this the worst episode of the season by any means, but not the number one best either. I would say it's somewhere in the middle of the season maybe upper lower half of season 3. But remember, season still has a lot of great episodes, so this won't ruin the season by any means. I wouldn't say it's an absolute masterpiece, but I don't think it's as bad as some people say it is. Club Spongebob is a decent episode. There's a lot of good in this one, like a lot of great jokes, sequences, and gags. But Squidward potentially starving to death does make it seem like it's going a bit too far if you ask me but it definitely could have been worse than how it actually is, so I guess I'm thankful for that. Well, that was something to do, but it's only barely the afternoon. 
So I have time for another complaint. Why didn't that episode have a seahorse? My Pretty Seahorse is the episode where Spongebob takes a liking to a stray seahorse and they become friends, but she causes a few problems at the Krusty Krab. Like Club Spongebob, this episode aired on July 12, 2002, and is the episode that introduces Mystery the Seahorse, everybody's favorite seahorse character in the series. Now recently, in episode 77, Jellyfish Hunter from season 2, we talked about how Mr. Krabs started to go downhill as a character, and that behavior is kind of carried forward for the rest of season 2, even if indirectly. But now we're in season 3, and this is Mr. Krabs' first major appearance this season, so I want to see if he still is eternally doomed to be downhill from now on, or if he's good in this episode. So let's watch and find out. So the episode starts up and it's spring in Bikini Bottom. The French narrator talks about Patrick looking around and when he realizes it's spring, he buries his sweater until winter. Then Spongebob comes outside and smells the flowers. Squeaver tries the same, but they hiss and he runs inside. Spongebob decided to do something nice and plant Squeaver some hypoallergenic flowers. Later that day when he tried, he just glanced away and then there was a bite missing from the flower. And it kept happening even three days later. When it happened a third time, Spongebob saw that a seahorse was eating the flowers all along. So the seahorse doesn't want hypoallergenic flowers to be planted for Squidward? Spongebob thought the seahorse was beautiful and thought that they could have some great adventures together. Later on, he was contemplating what to name her. He thought of Mystery, Grace, Majesty, or Debbie, but was deciding on Mystery. The seahorse saw Spongebob's floral bookmark and came over to check it out. Spongebob got excited and when she ate it, they officially become friends and we see a montage of them hanging out together for the rest of the day doing all sorts of activities together. Wait, I just realized something. Does the bookmark taste like a flower too? Later that night, when they went to sleep in the same room, Spongebob officially named her Mystery and thought that they would be friends forever. The next day, they passed Squidward on the way to work. Squidward tried to ignore them, but his wheel snapped and he fell down a hill and exploded. When Spongebob arrived at the Krusty Krab, he left Mystery outside, and Scooter and his friend thought she was some sort of kitty ride. Scooter upset Mystery with his coin, so she kicked him towards the horizon and he exploded too, scaring away Scooter's friend. Mr. Krabs came out and saw Mystery, and Spongebob explained who she was. You're a mystery, Spongebob. Oh, oh, Mr. Krabs, you have no idea. He tells Spongebob to get rid of her, much to Spongebob's dismay. Later on, Spongebob claimed he got rid of Mystery, and Mr. Krabs was satisfied. But Spongebob actually had Mystery hidden in the back while Patrick worked on a stable. Twelve seconds later, Mystery tried coming out again, so Spongebob fed her a Krabby Patty. She liked them, but she almost blew Spongebob's cover. After a close call, Spongebob prepared the next order, but Mystery ate them before Squidward saw them. After Squidward couldn't find them, Spongebob got scared thinking the Krusty Krab was haunted, until Squidward said there were no ghosts there. And while he was talking to Spongebob, he spotted Mystery eating other customers' food behind their backs. He ran out to get her and hid her back in the cabinet. After Squidward left, Spongebob found out Mystery had eaten a lot of stuff in the kitchen, even Old Man Jenkins. Why was old man Jenkins in the kitchen? The customers were complaining to Squidward, and the noise attracted Mr. Krabs. He went into the kitchen and saw that Spongebob still had Mystery, who burped up old man Jenkins. Mr. Krabs was not pleased to still see Mystery, and said he would get rid of her himself. Spongebob talked about how much Mystery meant to him, to which Squidward saw a bowl of onions. Mr. Krabs was touched by Spongebob's story, and said that he had a similar experience himself. When he was five, his dad gave him a dollar that he loved so much, but one day at the beach, he spent the dollar on a soda because he was dying of thirst. Damn, if only sodas were still that cheap today. Mr. Krabs says that sometimes you have to set things free even if it's hard. Mystery was sad being away from her proper home, so Spongebob understood and decided to let her go. He took Mystery outside and took the leash off her so she could leave and she left while Spongebob was crying. Mr. Krabs was proud of Spongebob for doing the right thing, but when Squidward told him Mystery ate some of his money, they both chased after her. Then we see Patrick unable to get into the hat store because of the wood on his head, and the episode ends. So that was My Pretty Seahorse, 
And I say that's a pretty solid episode. To get the biggest talking point out of the way, let's discuss Mr. Krabs first. Even though I claimed he seems to have recently become a bit more rude than you'd expect in the earlier seasons, I think he's pretty good in this episode. On the one hand, he told Spongebob to just flat out get rid of Mystery even when there wasn't a true need for him to let her go. I get it was still a problem to have her outside the Krusty Krab, but still. I know that Spongebob was planning on having a stable get built, so at least he knew that he couldn't have her at the Krusty Krab. And odds are, that's when Mr. Krabs mend at first. He only flat out tried to get rid of Mystery after he had caused problems at the Krusty Krab. And when Spongebob said how much he likes Mystery, Mr. Krabs even said how much he loved and related to Spongebob's feelings. Spongebob, your story has touched me hard. And then he shared his personal story about his dollar with Spongebob, showing a moment of vulnerability. I think that this is such a sweet moment. This feels in line with his appearances prior to Jellyfish Hunter, where he felt guilty of some of his actions towards Spongebob or opened up about how he was afraid to upset his daughter. This is such a nice Mr. Krabs moment. And he showed Spongebob how sad Mystery was being trapped in the kitchen, missing the great outdoors. Mr. Krabs also encouraged Spongebob to do the proper thing to let Mystery go so she would be happy. Instead of picking her up with brute force and throwing her outside or something, he calmly told Spongebob to do the right thing. And even though Spongebob was sad about it, he still comforted Spongebob and helped him feel better. Now to be fair, he did snap when he saw some of his money had been eaten, but let's be real, you'd do the same thing. So even though he was making Spongebob give up Mystery, it was still in a nice, slow, caring way, instead of forcing him to, which is nice. So unlike later seasons where he barely cares about his employees' feelings at all. I'd say Mr. Krabs is portrayed pretty well here. So we better enjoy this while it lasts, fellas. Moving on, there are a lot more great parts from this episode. I like the montage of Spongebob and Mystery hanging out together, and the music that plays is cool too. As well as when Spongebob randomly has a mustache in this shot, I think Patrick's pretty funny here, especially when he walks away from Spongebob towards the end. I like how they brought back the gag of Squidward exploding from episode 6, Jellyfishing from season 1, and I love that it happens to Scooter too. My favorite gags in this episode are when Old Man Jenkins was burped up, and when Squidward and Nat were both crying from the bowl of onions. That's why I don't like onions. My favorite scene in this episode is when Scooter and his friend think Mystery is a kiddie ride, and he says, I can't find the coin slot! Here it is! And when Scooter gets hurt by Mystery. My second favorite quote is Spongebob's imitation of Mystery. We suck! Squidward is awesome here as usual, especially when he says Cow Bob Ranch Pants and Sir Eats A Lot. I like when Mystery eats all the Krabby Patties behind everybody's backs and when everybody was mad about it. Mystery, in general, is a great character in this episode, and I really love her friendship with Spongebob throughout. It's so cute. The scenes where Mr. Krabs shared his story and where Spongebob let Mystery go actually pulled at my heartstrings, even on this latest rewatch. But there are a couple of nitpicks I have with this episode. I do kind of wonder why Spongebob asked Patrick to build the stable instead of Sandy. I know Patrick didn't actually build it and Sandy building it could have prevented the story from wrapping up the way it did. But I feel like it still could have taken a while to finish the stable anyway, no matter who was building it. And Sandy could have finished it right after Spongebob had let Mystery go free. Sure, it would have been all in vain, but the moral of the story still would have been learned no matter what in this case. And the other one is at the very end. Even though the ending with Patrick is kind of fun, I don't really get why it was there. I remember one time as a kid, I turned this on right at the end, and when I saw Patrick trying to enter the hat shop and he couldn't, I just wondered what the point of that was. It's a funny gag, but it feels kind of out of place at the end. But all those are so minor and don't impact how I like the episode. As much as I try not to compare sister episodes to each other, I'd say I honestly like this episode more so than Club Spongebob. The moral here is nicer, there's just as many if not more funny jokes and gags in this one, and we don't see characters nearly starve to death. This is pretty good, and I like a lot of what this episode brings to the table. It's funny, sweet, and just an all around good watch. I also like how Mystery's green. Don't see many green seahorses these days. We 
My Pretty Seahorse is a great episode. It's got some very sweet character moments, a lot of funny jokes and gags, and a nice flowing story. And sometimes in life, that's all you really need for a nice simple pleasure. But I'd have more nice simple pleasures in life if I didn't have to blow my life savings on one simple drink.